Good Tuesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to tonight's top stories, let's take a look outside our weather window. And what started off as a very hazy and smoky morning did get a little bit better here in the Wenatchee Valley. Once again, our lower Wenatchee Heights uh, cross our lower Wenatchee Heights Sky Fi Tower camera. There we go. Blue sky though. We did see plenty of that today and above normal temperatures. Boy, it got warm today, but it's all going to change as we get into tomorrow and especially into Thursday. We do expect some showers, <coughs> excuse me, to develop. I think we'll have our best chance for showers tomorrow night and then maybe some breezy conditions Thursday. Definitely cooler with highs on Thursday, only in the lower 70s. And we'll have more weather for you coming up a little bit later on. And now a few of the news stories we're following for you tonight. The three major fires burning above Lake Wenatchee have been largely responsible for the recent smoky skies and sometimes hazardous air quality conditions in the Wenatchee Valley. An East Wenatchee man was arrested early this morning after allegedly fleeing from multiple police agencies in a stolen truck. And two people were injured yesterday morning when a tire service truck collided with a potato truck west of Royal City. But first, our top story tonight. U.S. Highway 2 was closed again overnight as the Bolt Creek fire once again burned close to the roadway. The Washington State Department of Transportation said there's no estimate on when the highway will reopen. The fire has burned more than 11,000 acres since first being reported on September 9th north of Skycomish. The Stevens Pass Cross Mountain route was then shut off until last Saturday's reopening. Currently, the highway is closed from Old Cascade Highway to just west of Skycomish, a four-mile stretch because of fire activity and falling trees. Well, the three major fires burning above Lake Wenatchee have been largely responsible for the recent smoky skies and sometimes hazardous air quality conditions in the Wenatchee Valley. And fire managers say much of the same can be expected for the next week. The U.S. Forest Service said there could be some clearing on Wednesday through Friday as a cold front moves in, but the smoke is expected to kick back up for the weekend and into next week. Monday saw hazardous air quality in Kashmir and Wenatchee with some late afternoon improvement into today. The White River and Irving Peak fires have been burning since being ignited by lightning August 11th. The Minnow Ridge fire was reported September 9th, about 12 miles away from those two fires. The three fires have combined to burn about 10,000 acres, much of it in areas inaccessible to firefighters. An East Wenatchee man was arrested early this morning after allegedly fleeing from multiple police agencies in a stolen truck, which wound up at the bottom of a ravine near Kashmir. 35-year-old Eric Owen Connor faces possible felony charges. Washington State Troopers and Wenatchee Police allegedly spotted Connor driving a stolen Chevy Silverado about 12.30 a.m. near Horse Lake Road and say he fled from multiple attempts to make a traffic stop, eventually speeding northwest on Highway 2 at up to 100 miles per hour. The truck turned up Warner Canyon outside Kashmir and Connor and his passenger allegedly abandoned it when it became stuck at the bottom of a ravine two and a half miles from the highway. Chelan County Sheriff's deputies and police from three other agencies used a drone to follow the suspect's movements and intercept them. Sergeant Lee Risden told NCW Life the truck remained lodged in that ravine as of late this morning. Two people were injured yesterday morning when a tire service truck collided with a potato truck west of Royal City. The Grant County Sheriff's Office said the driver of the tire service truck was traveling west on Road 12 Southwest when he failed to stop at the intersection with Dodson Road and collided with the northbound potato truck. The unidentified occupants of the tire service truck were transported to Samaritan Healthcare in Moses Lake with undisclosed injuries. The driver of the unloaded potato truck suffered minor injuries. 
Well, when we come back, a Chelan County judge's ruling that Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railway is liable in a 2014 accident at, at Alcoa was overturned today by an appellate court. Three days before dueling Oktoberfest began, a federal judge is set to rule on whether one of the two events must stop using the word Leavenworth in its name. Washington may soon lift the mask requirement to enter medical and correctional facilities. And Clovis Point Elementary School in East Wenatchee held a grand opening last week for its new inclusive playground. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. As the sun sets on another hot summer, let the experts at Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa winterize and close your pool. Closing your swimming pool is the most important service to get right. Letting the professionals from Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa close your pool will ensure that you won't cost yourself thousands of dollars in damage next year. Want to save a little money? Consider dropping the water level yourself and save. Don't wait. Blue Lagoon's pool closing schedule is filling up quickly. Call today. Coming home should never be a chore. Let Merry Maids of Wenatchee customize all your cleaning needs. Weekly, bi-weekly, special occasion. Do you have a vacation home that needs cleaning? We clean them too. Locally owned and operated, let Merry Maids do the cleaning while you focus on your family and friends. Merry Maids has special offers to fit your budget. Request your free cleaning estimate today. 509-663-1710. Welcome back. In another news, the Chelan County judge's ruling that Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railway is liable in a 2014 accident at Alcoa. It was overturned today by an appellate court. Judge Travis Brandt ruled two years ago that BNSF should pay part of a settlement for a rail line collision that severely injured a worker at the former smelting plant. The crash between freight cars occurred in the Alcoa yard where the aluminum company had left three cars in the wrong position. The two companies reached a settlement with the injured employee. Brandt ruled Burlington Northern Santa Fe should have to pay an equal share of the settlement. But the State Court of Appeals ruled today that BNSF and Alcoa held a contract governing how to manage the tracks, which indemnifies the rail company from those legal claims. Well, three days before dueling Oktoberfest began, a federal judge is set to rule on whether one of the two events must stop using the word Leavenworth in its name. The city of Leavenworth is suing the nonprofit Project Bayern over the name Leavenworth Oktoberfest, with that three day weekend festival set to begin Friday at Town Toyota Center in Wenatchee. The city, which will host its own Oktoberfest on the same dates, says the title is misleading and that Project Bayern has committed false advertising and trademark violations to lure visitors to the Wenatchee event by mistake. U.S. District Judge Thomas Rice presided over the first hearing today on whether to enjoin Project Bayern from advertising its festival using the city's name. He not issued a ruling as of this afternoon. Well, Washington's outlook for COVID-19 is improving and for months facial masks haven't been required in most public settings. The exceptions are medical offices and hospitals as well as correctional facilities. State Health Secretary Umar Shaw said last week that rule may soon change as well. At this time, face coverings are still required in two particular settings, the healthcare setting as well as correctional facilities. Correctional facilities when there's medium to high community level transmission for the CDC 
And this is as per the Secretary of Health order. We're in the process of having our team review the Secretary's order for face coverings with an eye toward when such requirements may be able to be pulled back. Given where we anticipate we may be with the beginning of respiratory season and flu season around the corner, as I just mentioned, we may simply not be there yet. So stay tuned for some additional information. Clovis Point Elementary School in East Wenatchee held a grand opening last week for its new inclusive playground. Clovis Point moved from an intermediate to elementary school this year and new safer playground equipment was needed. First grader Amelia Nova and her parents Nicholas and Kimmy Nova worked with the Eastmont School District to make sure the playground was accessible to students of all physical abilities. Principal Amy Dory explains what an inclusive playground means and what makes theirs special. This is Amy Dory, I'm the principal here at Clovis Elementary School and we just had the official ribbon cutting of our brand new inclusive playground. As you'll see behind me, there's some pretty amazing features that we worked hard. The rubber flooring and there's lots of room. So our kids in wheelchairs, our kids with any mobility issues can get on it. They can move around. There's also a ramp on the other side there. They can get onto the ramp and access all of the games that are set for the kiddos. We have two different sizes of slides that they can go down. Um, we also have some musical flowers that they can play with and quite a few different swings behind me. We have three swings and then we have an adaptive swing that any of our kids with issues can get into. We can strap in and they can also swing. We have a couple climbing walls that we built in for all students, but the coolest part is it's really the first one in our valley that has all of these put together. Some have rubber with the chips, some have slides, but we're truly worked with a family called the Novas, or named the Novas, I should say, and they helped us really create this inclusive environment for all kids could play on and can play on together. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Please stay with us. Did you know people 65 or older make up 12% of the U.S. population but consume 34% of all prescription drugs? Protect yourself and your aged loved ones from prescription errors. Always read labels carefully to avoid mistakes. Ask your pharmacist if over-the-counter medicines conflict with your prescriptions and never skip doses or take more than is prescribed. This message sponsored by Aging and Adult Care of Central Washington. Call 1-800-572-4459 for prescription assistance. At D.A. Davidson in Wenatchee, they believe your investment success begins with a personalized plan. A plan that is the roadmap you need to navigate your way to living your best years in retirement. D.A. Davidson can help you create a plan so you can take the time to enjoy the finer things in life. Let the financial advisors at D.A. Davidson help chart your retirement future today. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. The Upper Chelan River could open to catch and release bass and trout fishing later this year if the State Fish and Wildlife Commission agrees. That reach of the river just below the Lake Chelan Dam has been closed to anglers for the last seven years. Yesterday, commissioners heard testimony on the proposed restart of fishing at their public meeting in Ocean Shores. They're scheduled to decide on that possible rule October 7th. Um, in 2015, in collaboration with Chelan PUD, uh, local tribes and other natural resource agencies, we closed the Chelan River to facilitate a multi-year um, survey to evaluate restoration efforts of resident fish. 
that evaluation completed in 2018. And the results of those surveys indicate that the most abundant fish observed were smallmouth bass, cutthroat trout, rainbow trout, and northern pike minnow. But other species detected included non-native tench and bluegill, dace, suckers, peamouth chub, and whitefish. And based on those results, even though it wasn't an objective of those surveys, but in looking at them, um, there is definitely recreational fishing opportunity in the Upper Chelan River. The issue of the uh, public safety um, is a significant concern. It's, it's in an area that fairly accessible, I mean, it's a, not a real accessible area, but in a very fairly public place. And so we're, we're in a situation where um, to some extent, I think it's the evaluation, how much opportunity um, do we get here um, for potential uh, cost or liability associated with uh, with that A lot of area. those roads or what appears to be trails on there are open to the public through a collaboration with the Trail Association and the and Chelan County PUD. So, I mean, there's and there, it's a tremendously popular trailhead. I mean, just the day I was out there, there was probably 30 cars there, people mountain biking. And um, so I think there's a lot of activity out there already. They've dealt with probably the trespass issues in terms of public access to this area. Um, and fishing might be a, a really welcome opportunity in, in addition to the recreational opportunities out there. We will take into heavy consideration what Chelan PUD has to say. Obviously they are the landowners, they are the access controlling entity. And so what the contents of this letter will say will probably weigh very heavy in what a staff recommendation is. So the fact that they are, they control the access um, certainly isn't lost on the region. So please be assured of that. Time now to take a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast. Wondering where the smoke's coming from? This, folks, is our Lake Wenatchee camera. That's right, you can just barely see the outlines of the Cascades. The lake is down there somewhere. Ugly, ugly air conditioner, uh, air condition, obviously, up at Lake Wenatchee. So a lot of that has been funneling down the valley, and that's what we have been seeing. Boy, just nasty up that way. We got warm today, 86 degrees, 2 degrees below our record high, and that was set in 1963. It was a warm one today, 72 is our normal high. 55 is where we started this morning, 49 your normal low temperature, 32 the freezing mark, our record cold, and that was in 1972. Sunrise, 655, and it comes up, or I should say sets tonight at 648. Let's take a look at what we can expect as we get you into Wednesday, and it will be cooler than today, about eight degrees cooler for most most of us, 79 for Moses Lake, Afreda, and Quincy, 78 in the Wenatchee area tomorrow, a little bit cooler in the higher elevation, 78 for Eniat, and 79 the high temperature tomorrow at Lake Chelan. I think we'll see a little less smoke, but it won't be until later on. Let's go to uh, Hurricane Ian. Right now, a Category 3 hurricane. Those winds are now at 120 miles an hour, and it's expected to make its way up into the Tampa area. Area, we could see a storm surge of between 8 and 12 feet by the time that hits sometime tomorrow on the west coast of Florida. So we'll keep our eye on that. A lot quieter here in the Pacific Northwest. We are going to continue to see widespread haze tonight. Low temperatures right around that 60 degree mark. You can see the uh, haze around the state. A few more clouds for Wednesday, mostly cloudy. Here's an area of low pressure and along with another area of low pressure, we're going to see some rainy conditions, especially late in the afternoon, early evening, 30% chance for showers and then on Thursday as that low pressure moves away from us partly cloudy skies and some cooler air will funnel into Washington State we'll see highs in the low 70s on Thursday and then as we get to Friday just beautiful weather high pressure anchors itself off the coast of British Columbia and we're going to see sunny skies it will slowly warm up mid 70s for Friday for high temperatures getting you into the upcoming weekend here we go October 
1st and it's going to feel more like summer. Sunny and warmer with highs in the upper 70s to almost 80 degrees. Sunday even a little bit warmer with lots of sunshine. We probably will see 80 degrees, maybe a touch higher on Sunday. And then kicking off our next work week on Monday, another area of low pressure squeezing that high pressure east. But that'll make for another warm day for us on Monday with sunshine and high temperatures again between about 75 and 85 degrees. Let's take a look now at that seven day forecast. 55 overnight tonight, mostly cloudy, a 30% chance for late day showers tomorrow and 81. Much cooler and mostly sunny on Thursday and then lots of sunshine Friday right through Monday with high temperatures in the upper 70s to lower 80s. And that's a look at your local weather forecast coming up next tonight's sports report with Eric Grandstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Hi, I'm John Volan and I'm running for judge here in Chelan County. For me, being a judge is a valuable way to serve my community. I believe that judges can make real and positive differences for the people who appear before them, as well as for the communities in which they serve. I'm asking for the chance to serve Chelan County and make those differences for you. This fall, vote for me, John Volan, for Chelan County District Court Judge. Paid for by the committee to elect John Volan for District Court Judge. I've been in law enforcement for over 36 years, and I've seen a lot of politicians talk about police. But Kim Schreier is different. She listens to us, and she delivers. It's Kim who got more money for law enforcement to fund equipment that we need, like new bulletproof vests, and more funding for mental health resources for an integrated approach to serve our community. We need to increase funding to police, and that's exactly what I've done in Congress. Kim has our back, and she has my support. I'm Kim Schreier, and I approve this message. And now, it's a sports update on the NCW Live channel. And a happy Tuesday to you. The Mariners are back at home after a much-needed day off before beginning the final 10 games of the regular season. Texas comes to town to T-Mobile Park. Game time 640 on Root Sports Northwest. Robbie Ray towing the rubber for Seattle. The uh, Mariners, by the way, magic number to clinch a wild card playoff spot is eight. That's the updated number for Major League Baseball. Any combination of eight Mariner wins or Baltimore losses would put Seattle into the postseason for the first time since 2001. It's the longest streak in all of professional sports in America. Toronto, meanwhile, leads the American League wild card chase by three games over Seattle after a 3-2 win over the Yankees in 10 innings last night. Vlad Guerrero Jr. had the walk-off RBI single in the bottom of the 10th for the Blue Jays in that contest. Baltimore just refuses to go away. Orioles bombed five home runs in Boston last night, beating the Red Sox 14-8. Baltimore's 80th win puts them just three and a half back of Seattle for that final playoff spot. Well, despite changing defensive coordinators last offseason, Seattle's still struggling on the uh, defensive side of the ball. Seahawks still near the bottom of the league in several key defensive categories, including overall yards per game, yards per play, rushing yards allowed. That's 157 per game. Coach Pete Carroll knows it's an area they need to improve upon. We saw a lot of improvement uh, offensively yesterday, and... Uh, it, it looked like the kind of game we were, we've been hoping to see where, where there was balance and, and we protected and we ran the ball some and, and uh, guys making their plays and we converted on third down, all those things, you know, didn't turn the ball over to the last play of the game. Um, so a lot of good things there and, and uh, that we can build on. Um, on the other side of the ball, we didn't we didn't get it done uh, on the early downs. They, they, they were able to make enough uh, running the football where they stayed with it and they were really consistent about that. And the runner did did a nice job, and and uh, and we didn't we didn't get enough stops in critical situations. Gave up a couple big runs, and in, in that really led to their numbers and all. Um, the the third downs don't look that that imposing. Um, they were four for seven, wasn't very very many of them, but they had big plays on those third downs that kind of changed field positions. They had you know, explosive plays on third down wins for them that were that caused us some some you know field position issues and stuff like that. So we've got stuff we've got to zero in on and get get done, and uh, it's obvious. You know, we played real hard. Special teams played really hard. They neutralized stuff that we thought that was the best special teams group we had seen in the early part of the season, and, and we played them well. And 
the thing that's frustrating about it is that we had a lot of numbers that we generally kind of consider as ones that make it make a difference in a game. Um, it, it, it didn't work out. You know, we're plus turnovers. We're, we're at over the 50 mark. You know, with with completions and runs, um, we we kind of we, we stayed in control of the ball. We had the ball more than they did. I mean, there's a lot of things there that that would you know, spell go down and win a football game. We'd been feeling pretty darn good about it uh, last time down, but um, you know, it didn't happen. So we're still we're still battling, and so we're going to keep going and keep keep clawing, scratching at it until we get it right and match it all up on both sides of the ball and play together well. Now, as Pete referred to there, offensively, Geno Smith continues to show he can move the team up and down the field. In fact, as Coach Carroll reviews the first three games, he has nothing but high hopes for the next few weeks as players get more time playing with each other. Yeah, we can. Next, next few weeks, we I think we can make we can make strides. And, and uh, I mean, these guys, are, they, they can't help but learn and grow, and they're out there playing and, and all that. And so um, as we all put it together, um, I mean, I mean, how could you, if you like the Seahawks, how could you not be fired up about what Gino's done? You know, I mean, he's done a great job for us. And so um, that's just one of the factors, you know, but it's a factor that was a question mark. And now you can see him. So I'm really, really fired up about that. Coach Carroll says they continue to work on improving Smith's confidence in his ability play by play and quarter by quarter. Things come so comfortably to him if he just starts really well and does a really nice job technique wise and believes in himself and makes each play. See, we've been through this for a lot of years with guys, and, and th this principle that he that we teach and that um, you know I have so many examples of of guys who have captured it over the years. Once you get really confident that you entrust yourself, then the game becomes, the plays become a lot the same, one after another, after another, after another, and you just keep stacking them up. So he's working on stacking, you know, plays in a series and stacking plays in a game and, and then games game after game and see if he can keep growing. He's got a ton that, that he's going to learn and, and all. But it's more simple than it, than it is complex, though. It's, it's, it's really, it's, it's the fundamentals of, of the way he can play. Not everybody can do it this way. So just... All of the guys that I've coached over the years, they, they're all watching. Seattle takes its 1-2 and two record on the road to Ford Field in Detroit Sunday to face the 1-2 and two Lions. Detroit's offense, by the way, ranked third in the NFL heading into this game. Seattle's defense is 29th. Well, here's what's coming up today on the prep schedule across north central Washington. First in girls soccer. The afternoon games, Oroville hosting Bridgeport, Manson a date with Lake Roosevelt, Pateras visits Brewster, Brosser's at Efredo while Chelan's in Quincy. Later on, it's Cashmere hosting Cascade at 7 o'clock tonight, Sunnyside at Eastmont while Moses Lake is hosting Davis. The small school volleyball schedule is underway with Pateras hosting Easton, Thorpe's visiting Eniat at 6, 6.30 matches, have Okanagan and Manson, Brewster's in Lake Roosevelt, Oroville's at Tenasket, Cascade visits Cashmere, and Quincy plays host to Chelan. Meanwhile, for the larger schools, East Valley's at Ifreda in Seawak play at 6.30. Big Nine Volleyball finds Eastmont at Sunnyside at 7, while Moses Lake is traveling to Davis. Well, Eastmont will try to make it uh, three Big Nine wins in a row Friday night as they celebrate homecoming with Sunnyside in town. Grizzlies are 1-2 and two on the season, coming off a 41-21 over West Valley last Friday. We'll have the action with yours truly and Paul Collard on the call, starting with our pregame at 6.30 Friday night live here on the NCW Light Channel. Then the next day, we'll be at Lee Boftel Field of the Apple Bowl for girls soccer at 1 o'clock between Wenatchee and Moses Lake. Sebastian Morago with a call. Again, that's just before 1. That's a look at sports news. I'm Eric Granstrom. Grant, back to you. Thank you very much, Eric. And that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or you can give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for being with us. Have a great night. News, weather, and sports. It's all here weekdays at 5, 6, and 10 on your local news source, the NCW Life Channel.
The NCW Life Channel offers marketing packages that help you build your brand and sell your products and services. From traditional TV ads to targeted digital campaigns, let us help you build your customer base. Call NCW Life Channel today. 303-566-5600. 